All right, guys, so in the previous video, I took an hour to go through the XIC and XIO. Uh, so some of you just want to see how to do a three wire or a latching circuit rather than watching me for an hour. If you watched, if you took an hour and watched the previous video, skip ahead because I'm going to do the exact same circuit right here in hopefully a short amount of time. Like I say, five minutes, but you know it's going to be 20. Okay, so let's start off uh, with our inputs. On this trainer right here, we've got our input terminals here. Uh, if I push them to the right-hand side, they're momentary, they just bounce back. If I put them to the left-hand side, then they are maintained. So those are gonna uh, stimulate my push buttons here. Uh, I have 24 volts available here, DC. Uh, and then these guys correspond to my outputs. Right now I'm connected up to my output number two and the common and my meter you'll see is set for DC voltage. Uh, so obviously there's no voltage coming out yet because I don't have anything set up with the PLC. You'll also see faintly up here that these LEDs will change as we change both the inputs and fire on the outputs there. So let's start off with a standard three wire or a latching circuit. So um, I've got my RS links up and running. I've downloaded to the PLC just to make sure everything was cool. Um, so now I'm gonna drop in my instructions. So I'm going to grab this guy right here, this examine if closed. I'm gonna drop it down till it's green and let her go. That's gonna be my stop push button. Then I'm gonna grab my start push button, drop her down, put that in series there, right? So this and this have to be true before my output turns on. So I'm just gonna single click on the output and then bam, it goes over to the right-hand side there. So you'll notice that all your outputs are on the right-hand side, all of your inputs are on the left-hand side. So we have our stop, our start. Uh, now we need a holding contact. We need something to bypass the start switch uh, so that we have through the stop, through this holding contact, and over to your output there. So I'm gonna uh, click on my start, and I'm gonna choose this one right here. So I'm gonna choose a branch. When I click on that guy, then it comes over to the right-hand side, which I find is kind of frustrating, because you just have to do, uh, have to move it over. So uh, now I'm going to grab one side and bring this over. No, I'm gonna grab this side. So the, I'm grabbing the right-hand side of the branch, bring it over. Uh, so that it goes around my start switch. Once I see green, I can let her go. And now I've got my branch circuit uh, around my XIC here for my start. Okay, now I want to drop in another XIC right here. So I'm clicking on the left hand bar here of my branch, dropping in another exam, examine if closed or examine on. Okay, and now I've got my stop, my start, my holding contact, and my output there. Sweet. Now, in other videos, you will see that um, th like it may be different. They may have the, have the start over here and then the stop over here. doesn't matter which, like in my eyes, it doesn't matter where you place those because they're in series, right? So it's just a logic and circuit here between your stop and your start and a parallel with the holding contact here. So for me, it doesn't really matter where I put my start, my start, my stop, good Lord, Peter. Uh, I could put it over here or I could put it, over here, right? To me, it makes no difference. Uh, other videos, you will see that this is an XIC, right? Or uh, an examine if off, okay? That's because they're using a normally open contact. I'm not making use of a normally open contact. I'm making use of a normally closed contact the way that a stop button would normally be wired, okay? So you'll see that difference between my videos and other people's videos. Um, I've asked numerous times on all kinds of different uh, forums. Nobody can give me a clear answer as to why uh, others are using an XIC there. So I'll ask the question again. Uh, why are people using an XIC rather than, sorry, an XIO rather than an XIC? Um, so I'm going to continue on. I need to throw in my addresses here. So I'm going to double click on this guy, click on this arrow here, and then I want to look for my inputs. So I'm looking here at local one I for inputs. I'm going to click on this bad boy. That's going to open up uh, these guys for my fault data uh, and readback. I'm going to click on the data. Easy now. Click on the data. Open this up. Uh, and I believe on the previous uh, video we had zero and one being used for some uh, some like limit switches or just toggle switches. Uh, and then we had the stop and the start on two and three. Okay, so I'm gonna have uh, the stop on input number two. So again, everything starts at zero, so zero, one, two. So the third bit I'm gonna make use of. So third bit, but it's labeled two, right? Because everything starts at zero. So I'm gonna use local input number two. Okay, 
in that first word. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to double click on these guys, click on this arrow, find my inputs, open them up, find the data, click on this button right here. Okay, and the next one I'm sequentially going to use is input number three for my start push button. Okay, then I've got uh, my outputs over here. We had two outputs in the previous video, video zero and one that were being made use of. So I'm going to use this as output number two. So I'm going to do the same thing. Double click on this bad boy, click on the arrow. But now I want to find my outputs, right? So I want to find the first word here, local one, uh, but I need the outputs. So I'm here, local one colon zero. I'm clicking on this guy. Okay, then I've got my data there. I'm clicking once there. That brings out down, a drop down menu here. And we're using, uh, we used these two previously on the previous video. So I'm going to make use of output number two for my output for this three wire control. Now, I don't have anything wired uh, as, uh, as a feedback from the field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that bit of data and I'm going to say, all right, when that's on, I want it to keep it on, right? I want that to be my holding contact right down here. So oftentimes this holding contact will be a physical contact that would be wired into uh, these inputs here, right? But I'm not making use of that. I'm just simply looking in the memory of the PLC. And if this output is on, then I want to look to see if it's on. So this one here is an examine if closed, right? Or examine if on, right? If we hover over this guy, it also says examine on. So if this guy is on, this will be true and I'll have a path of logic, not a path of current, but a path of logic over to the output there. So I'm now going to click on this guy and click on my, um, my outputs here. Again, click on data and I'm gonna choose that output number two once again. Beautiful, now I've got all my addresses. So my PLC, uh, I could download this now and the PLC should be fine. Um, because it doesn't really care what my names for them are. It's just, um, it's just looking for where the data is going to be stored within the PLC. Okay, but let's uh, name these guys. So I'm gonna right click on this guy. Uh, I'm going to go down and go to edit main operand description. Okay, and this one was my stop push button. Uh, this one I'm gonna say is a normally closed stop push button. So like out in the field, the wiring of the, or the physical nature of the, of the contact is that it's a normally closed contact. Okay, now that name sticks there. Okay, I'm going to right click on my start push button now, go down to main operand description. Okay, I'm gonna say this one is a normally open start push button. Beautiful, click anywhere in the screen and that's good to go. And as soon as I change this name right here, then any uh, bit that is associated with that will also change the name as well. So I'm gonna right click on this guy, go down to edit uh, main operand description, click on that guy, and this is gonna be my output. Come on, beat. So output number two. Okay, as soon as I do that and change that name, we should see that this name changes at the same time. Oh yes. Okay, so now we're good to go. Uh, we're going to download to the, to the unit now. Uh, so we're gonna go to communications, who's active. There's other ways to, uh, to download, but this is how I like to do it. Uh, so we have our PLC 192.168.1.10 hooked up with uh, the ethernet cable at the moment. So we've already gone through how to talk to it over USB, how to set their, our IP and then talk to it over ethernet. So hopefully uh, you're good to go there. If you haven't, go back and watch those uh, videos. So we're gonna click on this guy and we're gonna click on download. Okay, this is just telling us that, you know, we're downloading to the machine. Uh, we have to keep track of these dangers. Um, just keep in mind that some things may be not working while we're downloading. So we're downloading to our unit um, and it's our uh, Compact Logix 5370. Looks good. Okay, so we're going to download that guy. Excellent. Okay, so uh, we've now downloaded the unit. Okay. If we take a look at, uh, like, does it show us errors or anything? There we go. So we can see here zero errors, zero warnings there. That's good. So now what we need to do is we need to go online. So you'll notice that here uh, it says controller okay, IO okay, uh, but we're in remote program. So like when I change the um, the inputs, oh, they're actually, they're working. Okay. Um, so it looks like 
I, I can change my uh, inputs there. So I have uh, input number two, so that would be a normally closed, right? And I can change the status of my uh, start push button. So that's cool. My inputs are actually coming in, but we're not seeing anything change on the output there, right? So that's interesting that you can change that. You can see the status of your inputs there if you're in remote program, uh, but we can't see the output status there. So let's click on this guy uh, and let's go into the run mode and so let's see if that changes anything. So clicking on run mode, yes, right on. Okay, so now we got green lights on the side for our power rungs here, okay? I have kept the stop in the closed position. So you'll see here that I have it uh, toggled to the left there. So that's being maintained. Again, with these switches, they're kind of cool. If you press them to the right, then they are momentary. They just bounce back, right? But obviously with our stop push button, it would be in the maintain position. So I'm gonna keep it in the maintain closed position. This guy is looking for the presence of 24 volts or the presence of a one in the memory. Both are happening at this moment. If we take a look at uh, the LEDs here, you might just be able to make out that LED right there. I got the ISO blown up, so I'm not sure whether you can actually see that LED changing state there, uh, but the input is live there. Uh, so when that is true, that means that there's a one in the memory there. Um, and if we hover over this guy, then it usually shows us the value. So you can see there that it says the value there. So third from the bottom, it says normally close stop push button, then it says description, then it says value is one. Okay, so if I change the state there, you can see there that that's interesting. It goes, maybe you have to hover over it again. Now it goes to a value of zero. Okay. I'll change the state again. Okay. It's now a one. It looks like I have to hover over it again. And you see that the value is now a one there. So that's true. Okay. So now we need, just need to momentarily hit our normally open start push button. Okay. So I'll just momentarily hit that guy. That's guy, that guy is input number three. So I'm going to press the start push button. Okay, if we hover over this guy, you can see that the value is one. Okay, so that instruction with the XIC is looking for the presence of a one, so it's true. So my output is now turned on. So you'll see that uh, the output LED has turned on here. It's also turned on here. Uh, it looks like I took too long to do the video, so let's turn our meter back on. Beautiful, so our output is punching out 24 volts now. Okay, so here we can see that the output has a value of one. Okay, clearly, clearly we can see that it has a value of one because this is true, right? We can see that the LEDs are on here and we have the LED on here and we can see that there's 24 volts available at that output terminal. Uh, so all of those are what the XIC is looking for right here, right? It's looking for the presence of a one that something's on or that there's 24 volts being sent out to the output. All of those are true. Um, it can't really see that there's 24 volts going out. It just sees that um, that there's a one in the memory, right? So one in the memory here for the value means that this is true. And now we have a path of logic continuity to keep that output on, okay? If I wanted to break that logic continuity, then I would have to press the stop push button. So by pressing the stop push button, that would stop the 24 volts going to that input, which would change that input to a zero. This is looking for the presence of a one. So if I put a, if I have a zero in the memory, then it will no longer be true. And I will not have any logic continuity. We should see that the output turns off and that this bad boy goes to zero volts. So we'll do that now. We'll open up uh, input number two. Okay, so that means that we now have a zero in the memory. Okay, as soon as that happened, our output turned off. That means that this is no longer true. So the green disappeared from here. And we can see that we have no longer any voltage at the at the output there. Sweet, so walking one more time through the logic there, uh, we have our number two, which is our stop push button. That is just being, um, not being pressed. So we have 24 volts going into the input. Okay, if we momentarily press the start push button, that turns on our output. I let go of the start push button. That goes to a zero, but the output is still true. So it's held on and maintained. And we can see that we have 24 volts available at the output, okay? Hitting the start push button does nothing to the circuit now because I'd have another path of logic continuity around it. So the way that I would stop the logic continuity would be to press the, st the stop push button, 
opens up the stop push button. When I let go of the stop push button, it would revert back to its rest state and I'm ready to go uh, with the circuit as is. All right, guys, hopefully that uh, makes everything crystal clear on the, um, on the three wire. Again, if you have comments regarding this bad boy and why I've used an XIC rather than an XIO, uh, please feel free to put uh, comments below um, and I'll see you in the next one. I think the next one we're gonna do is some timer circuits.